Okay, um, welcome back. Now we continue the discussion on population genetics. And here we're going to use another measure to represent the population um, genetics, another important concept of population genetics, which is the cause of variation that is caused by linkage disequilibrium. Right, linkage is not a new concept. We learned this before as we study a gene mapping, right? When Morgan and his student using the recombinant frequency to measure the distance between alleles, right? only apply to those alleles in the same linkage group. So in the linkage equilibrium concept, it's referring to this alleles and the specific allele at the first locus is associated with a specific allele at the second locus with equal probabilities. So you can see the allele frequency of A allele, if it's 0.5, then the small a frequency will be 0.5. They each have a 0.5, one half probability, while the combination of these two alleles linked together each have a one quarter. So there, you don't see any bias, right? A bigger A, bigger B allele in the same linkage group have the equal uh, frequency with the small a, small b linkage group, which each has its to, uh, one quarter, right? one fourth. Well, if in another situation, if the recombination didn't follow this equilibrium format. Instead, they have a bias. You can see that even the, the allele A and B, they have equal frequencies. But clearly, it biases more towards the homozygous. Right? Bigger, a bigger B allele has 0 0.5, and small a, small b have 0 0.5. While the heterozygous, right? bigger a, small b, small a, bigger b, where they have zero frequency. And in this situation, we call that this linkage has a disequilibrium equation. We call them LD, linkage disequilibrium. A specific allele at the first locus, at the A locus, is associated with a specific allele at the second locus, B, more often than expected by chance. Right here, bigger A, B, B, is much more than one quarter. Or bigger A, Small b has zero, much less than one quarter. So that is the situation when we when we say they have a different. Uh, we have a linkage disequilibrium, and uh, this can be a measurement, can cause to, or can be the reflection of allele frequency and the distribution of these alleles. And remember when we talk about the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. There is another factor called genetic drift. It also can also lead lead to the non, um, not conformed to the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So genetic drift is a random sampling of the population, and that random sampling is the weakest when you have a large population. <laughs> see, we have a see we have individual with 500 individuals. So the allele frequency change is very little. You don't have that much variations because the number increased so that will be kind of buffered the random genetic drift. Well, if you have a smaller individual right, over 30 generations, and you can see the allele frequency varies significantly from low to high, which much more impact on the random drift. So in this context, I want you to take a read and pay attention to a concept called neutral alleles. And what is a neutral evolution? This is a very new concept, and it is becoming more and more popular in population genetics, referring to the concept of drift, genetic drift. In fact, this come up with the alternative um, force of evolution. It's not by natural selection, but by this genetic drift. So random drift can lead to evolutionary change too. So take a read at this concept called neutral evolution and neutral alleles. Okay? And uh, there are some examples of this genetic drift concept. And right? we can have these uh, um, different populations. 
in the you can have a population of Costa Rica, Finland, Hungary, Japan, Iceland. If you cannot see this program, this diagram very well, I will recommend you to look at the PowerPoint slide I post to the blackboard. Right? Basically, what you miss probably is the name of this ethnic group: right? Japan, Iceland, Newfoundland, Quebec, Sardinia, and this population, the current population, actually was founded by this number of individuals. To be more interesting was this Finland was founded with 500 people. After close to 100 generations, we have a current size of 5 million people. And these 5 million people, if there is no migration in or out, should represent the 500 people's genetic makeup. So that is clearly a random sampling, and that is called a genetic drift. <clears throat> and there is another type of genetic drift lead to this bottleneck, right? we, we caused by the population bottlenecks. When a large population is drastically reduced in size, say for example, this 26 alphabet drastically introduced, reduced to this 4 alphabet, and the future generation can only have the uh, character of this 4 alphabet. So you can see the change right, of the genetic allele frequency versus the original population. So that's called um, population bottleneck. And they can gain the size of the population, but they will have these uh, limited genetic variations if that's the genetic bottleneck uh, effect. <coughs> and uh, definitely, it's found there, in fact, can alter allele frequencies. And we can see, again, you know, to refer to the book, to the PowerPoint I post on Blackboard to see the, the complete name. This is the ABO system and MN system. And uh, there's a US population and Dunker population in the US and the European population. They each represent this by these different allele frequencies. And that caused by the founders. Right? We, we know the found Dunkers are descendants of German immigrants who immigrated to Germantown, Pennsylvania in 1819. So the Dunker population in Pennsylvania have this frequency, while the US have this frequency of this ABO and MN blood types. So you can see the founder effects indeed change the allele frequency over not very long, over, over 170, 180 years. And human population also have different levels of its genetic diversity if you use a microsatellite heterodiagnosis measurement. As you, you can see, the Americas, you know, on the bottom, we have the very low haplotype heterozygosity, like they're really similar to each other, and including the ocean, Oceania, Australia, Hawaii, and uh, even as we move to East Asia, the diversity starts to increase. And Europe is more, is higher diverse than America, and Africa, of course, has the highest diversity right, measured by this. Uh, microcellular heterozygosity. <clears throat> well, genetic drift and non-random mating can lead to some um, human or medical conditions, like small population size, increases the probability of homozygosity, where we talk about this inbreeding uh, depression for recessive alleles. In this uh, case, we can use the Amish and Minoti populations. They, when they marry predominantly within their own group, that will lead to this uh, Increased incidence of this uh, recessive condition known as this uh, Alice Van Quibel syndrome. <clears throat> and of course, selection also play a part. Right? When we have this uh, artificial selection, right? domestication is artificial um, selection and improvement. We select the elite group, and all that will also change the uh, allele frequency, whether you favor dominant or recessive. So this is a summary of some genes showing the evidence for natural selection in specific human populations. And uh, these are the conditions, the trait, and those are the genes responsible for this. And uh, interestingly, male boldness uh, pattern was actually selected among Europeans. And here, morphology was selected by East Asians. Resistant to malaria, we learned this in Africans, among Africans. And uh, skin pigmentation, or they're selected for East Asians. Resistant to lesser fever, or selected African. So these are just a, a summary of several conditions uh, in human population 
that respond to natural selection. Under the selection concepts, I would like you to uh, review a concept called directional selection. Okay? Under that directional selection, what is a positive selection? We talked about the milk case study. We mentioned the concept of more positive selection. But we have not talked about purifying selection or balancing selection. So take a look, uh, take a read in your book, and uh, fill the blank and answer the question. What is a purifying selection? What is balancing selection? Okay. And uh, so this, there we have it. Right. And um, I'm also going to pose another lecture by the uh, uh, National Institute of Health our professor on the Genome TV about the latest development of population genetics. And uh, of course, there are going to be in-class discussions. And uh, to review those concepts, we, I will pose that to Blackboard, to Blackboard as well. OK, guys, I will see you in class. Bye-bye for now.